Hey beloved, my name is Krista Pettiford. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to share a prophetic word with you based on a prophetic dream that the Lord gave me on Tuesday morning at 3 a.m. So that was a week ago. I think it, it it was for me personally, but when I woke up and interpreted it by the Spirit of God, I knew that it wasn't just for me, but a word that I was supposed to release here on my channel for other people. Um, it was about counting the cost of the things that we do. I also believe that this word is not only for this month, but it is definitely connected to the biblical year that will be coming upon us, 5783, at the end of September. I think the date is 5, uh, September 26th at sundown, but if I'm wrong, I will put it in the comments. But it's around that time. So at the end of September, we will be entering to a new Hebraic biblical year on God's calendar. And um, this word for September um, translates into that time. And so I want to get into this. It's about counting the cost of the decisions that we make today, for there will be a payment tomorrow. Before I get into it, I would like to ask you to please like this video. That means thumbs it up give it, uh, share it with someone you know, and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Thank you. I'm going to share the dream and then the interpretation of the dream and the scripture that he gave to connect it to the dream. So I went to bed and I really couldn't sleep because I had some things on my heart that some decisions I needed to make. And the Lord has been having me make a lot of hard decisions in these past maybe three or four months. And, um, but this is, again, is something that I didn't want to do because I'm kind of a people pleaser. So it was a decision that I was going back and forth about you know, I knew what God had spoken to me, but I hadn't spoken out and let the people know I had made my decision. So that being said, two weeks prior, the Lord woke me up in the middle of the night and he spoke clearly to me and told me this and this and thus you cannot do. And I heard him, but I was still praying over how to say that because sometimes I say yes to things that I shouldn't say yes to. And God is chopping that off of me. And maybe you do that too. And he's saying, no, you can't do that. And so in this dream, I was going, I was going to, I had fallen, I had fallen asleep late. I was actually up late because I couldn't sleep because I had all these things on my mind about the things that I have to do. And the Lord spoke to me before I went to sleep and I said, okay, Lord. And then I went to sleep and I woke up when I, after I woke up from the dream, it was about 3 a.m. But what happened in the dream is I was in a pool at a hotel that I know uh, of in my local area. And I was serving people. I was a waiter in this pool, a waitress in this pool, a swimming pool. And it's like one of those lazy river pools. And so I was standing on a glass top. The pool was actually very deep, but the people that were in the little um, plastic rafts, <laughs> follow me, just go with me for a minute. They were in the lazy river type thing and they were just cruising down on the little rafts through the circular river pool. And I was taking their orders. And, but behind us in this pool was, uh, behind us, not in the pool, but above on a hill was a lot of construction going on. Although this portion was built where we were at, the whole project was not complete. And I work a lot in projects as well. And so the whole project was not complete up at the other side. And so I am standing in this pool. It looks like I'm standing on water or in water that is not deep, um, that is shallow, but I'm really in deep water. But there's a glass surface between the top water and the bottom water that can be open for deeper depth. 
and the people that are floating by who I'm about to take their order, they are floating at the top two, but under them and under me is glass so that you don't have to be in the deep, but the deep is there. And so I'm taking their orders and they're ordering things, but because the project is not completed, the prices of things have not been revealed. And I'm, they're not just ordering food. I know by the spirit that they're ordering uh, things, but they don't know the cost of the things that they are ordering. Um, spiritual things, things that cost a lot of money, things that are going to have a price, that have that that um, have a price, a high price to them, but they think they can afford it. And I think that they can afford it. We're not really asking the right questions. We're ordering it under the assumption that they can afford it, that they'll be able to pay for it. But yet the project isn't finished, so the price has not been yet revealed. And so when I wake up from this dream at 3 a.m., the Holy Spirit begins to speak to me. And he speaks to me out of Luke 14, 28. For which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it, lest after he has laid the foundation is not and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. The Lord spoke these verses to me. And he then began to speak to me what I'm about to share with you. And he said, there are things that you are ordering that you haven't counted the cost of the, because it has not been revealed to you. It, it looks like you're treading in shallow water, but you are in deep waters. That means it's very important when you're in the deep. That means that you, it is very important. What you're doing is more important than you realize because you're up here in the surface, but right now you are treading in deep waters and the decisions that you make today, your yes today is gonna to affect your tomorrow. And as you're just ordering things and ordering things on your plate, see when he began to interpret it me or interpret it to me, I was no longer the waitress, but he was, showing me it from a perspective of what I was doing, that the yeses that you are giving today and even the no's, every decision has a payday. The Bible says the rages of sin is death. And so, and that's not to say it was sin, but even though disobedience is sin, but um, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, Romans 6, 23. But what, he, what, what that means is that there is a wage, there is a cost, there is a price to be paid for the decisions that you make. And sometimes we think we're doing a God thing by saying yes, it might be a good thing. And that was the thing. It was something good that I was asked to do, but it was not what God called me to do. And so as I'm sitting here being busy saying yes to what people are asking, asking me to, God never told me to do those things. So he woke me up. He cared enough about me to wake me up in the middle of the night and say, you have to fix this because you think that you're just going to keep going along. But I shook you out of your sleep two weeks ago and I'm waking you up with a dream tonight because it's weighing on your heart because I know, cause, because you know what I said, don't fear man, fear God. Rather fear God than man. Obey God and leave all the consequences to him. It doesn't matter if you've already given your guess. You're gonna have to go back and say no. And the other thing that he told me is to stand on it. Sometimes I'm one of those people who, when I say no, instead of letting my yes be yes and my no be no, I will begin to, in trying to explain to somebody why I can't do something or why I have to say no, I talk myself right back into something that God never told me to do. And the important thing is the cost that he showed me is that I have something for you to do it up there. And if you're yes, and you're occupied and you got all these things on your plate, you can't even hear me speak to you when I call you to do something, nor are you available because you have given your time to something I never told you to do, whether it's good 
or not. That doesn't mean it's God. And it doesn't matter what people say and what they ask you to do, whether it's ministry or an opportunity in the workplace or whatever it is, or even a relationship. If it's not God, just like in a relationship, you might be occupying your time with someone who God never meant you to be with. And then you're not opening up the way for God to bring into your life the person that he has for you. So whatever it is, count the cost because you may not be able to pay the price or you may have to pay the price. So Jesus here says you won't be able to finish because you didn't count the cost. So when I woke up, I realized that they weren't gonna be able to pay for what they had ordered up. They weren't gonna have enough money and maybe they'd have to pay for it in ways that they hadn't intended to. So that's the cost, that's the wage. So when you're doing something, when, when Romans talks about the wages of sin or the wages, wages of your decisions and your choices, maybe you're gonna have to pay for it. It's like a person who does something steal something that they can't afford well they stole it stole it and but they didn't count the cost even though they think they got away with it jail time or whatever it is you're gonna have to pay it back one way or the other and so when i woke up i knew that even though they, they were making a bill that they couldn't pay for and that it was going to cost them up the road maybe you know you do something or a person who gambles and then they have to sell their house. They have to give up something to pay for something that they should have never bought in the first place. And so in spiritually speaking, you may have to give up something that God wanted for you, that he had for you because you are purchasing with your time, talent, and treasure something he never had for you. And the cost, the price, the wage of your decision to do what he told you not to do today is that you're not going to be able to purchase or buy or um, receive and experience the thing that he has for you. He says, I have a plan for you. It is my plan, it is not your plan. If you allow me to lead you instead of you getting ahead of me, I will reveal it to you step by step. But if you continue to stride ahead of me and do it your way, you're going to miss it. So then you have to go back and say no. So you best believe that I um, made that decision to do what God said regardless of who, how, who um, not gets hurt, but who doesn't like it, who doesn't agree with it, who um, I, so to speak, committed to without asking God first. Or I thought it was okay, even though the Lord gave me a directive to chill, so to speak, in this season, to not be busy do not get so in engulfed in things but to rest in this season and let him continue to do a work in me and so having to say you know wait i can't do this you know you will disappoint some people with your no you may even disappoint many people but it's better to obey god and leave the consequences to him than to disobey him and pay the price later so that you might please people or even if you're pleasing yourself even if you're doing something that you want to do that god told you not to do and you're doing it for yourself and not other people whichever way it is i would encourage you to if the holy spirit is prompting you do not take that lightly to do or not do what he tells you do not take lightly disobeying his instruction to you as regards to what he would have you to do or focus your attention and time on in this season because there are, is a price and it may seem like it's a small thing and you're not and you're treading lightly and you're not really in the deep, but you are really in deep waters. You are really in over your head. You are really in more than you can see now because see, the building wasn't done, but the master builder knew the price. The builder knew the price, but we who were in it before it was building, it had already been mapped out and it was going to be complete, but we wouldn't see it until then. So we were assuming, do not assume that it's okay to 
order things that God never told you to. Find out the price. Inquire of God. Is this what you would have me to do? Is this what you would have? Which way you would have me to go in all manner and aspects of your life? And let Him lead, direct, and guide you so that He can tell you if you have enough to build it. That you wouldn't lay a foundation and not be able to finish it because God never called you to do that. Or you finish it with your blood, sweat, and tears and the anointing of the Lord is not on it and you miss the thing that he's called you to do. Maybe you're in a season of waiting, a season of pause, a season of transition. Don't get ahead of God. Let him rebuild and restore you so that you don't trip up over the same things in your next season. Let him restore your soul um, and in a season, give you a season of rest. And so I would just encourage you to build according to what he shows you not get caught up in what you know pleasing others whatever area of life it is in don't chase after success because real success is doing the will of god finding the will of god for your life and doing it and even if that means waiting and doing nothing then god has a purpose for your waiting season if that means running hard in one season, then God has a purpose for your works in a season. But it's not according to him. Sometimes we feel like we need to be doing something. And so we're ordering up a whole things we're doing, doing, doing. And God may want you to be still. So for me, that's what it is. He wants me to be still and not do as much in this season, but to heal and rebuild so he can heal and rebuild my life um and you know there's a temptation to go past that and to do because i'm used to but he said no i set this season aside specifically for you to do this and that doesn't mean you can't serve or take on other things but what it means is that don't put a whole don't order up a whole bunch of things because i want you to be freed up for what i'm about to call you into I'm about to call you into some new things. And if you're attached to other things, you won't be free to do what I want you to do. And that's the cost that you would pay up the road. And so I saw that clearly. And so I pray that over you. I hope this word blessed you. And even if it's not the same as mine, apply this word to your life. Count the cost of your yeses, of your decisions, of what you're taking on in your life in this season. And, and bring them before God and ask him to show you if you should be doing them. And what is the cost the wages of the road can you afford all the things that you're adding to your life spiritually um, financially personal in your personal relationships in your own well-being your soul and spirit uh, health ask yourself that give yourself some margin allow yourself some time to stay healthy spirit soul and body don't fill up your plate that's what i would say to you god bless you thank you for watching this if you stayed all the way through please like this video again i would ask you please share it with someone who needs to hear this prophetic word of encouragement and give it a thumbs up god bless you until next time